So it's been three weeks since our last update and actually a lot of things have changed. I've uh, started spreading this mulch around and that is going to make things pretty happy for the plants and unfortunately pretty happy for the weeds too. Uh, we, uh, this um, little relative of, of Barbados, Barbados or West Indian cherry, the acerola, uh, this is just blooming like crazy. It doesn't have a lot of leaves, but it sure is, is uh, blooming a lot. Uh, the new leaves, I mean the new flowers um, are pink and then they seem to fade to white. Uh, so that was a, a fun little thing. This is definitely uh, doing much better now that it's in the ground. Uh, as you may recall, uh, this box was on top of it for um, the mulch delivery. And so that protected it. And um, then after it got out of, um, you know, sort of isolation there, uh, it uh, has started to grow. Um, we have this seedling here that I thought it it's amazing that a mango seed could find enough dirt. This lychee tree was planted in 1955 and I'm basically standing on top of a huge mass of roots. But somehow a seed found its way down, you know, the roots of the seed uh, down to where it could survive. Uh, it actually held two fruit on it. Uh, and uh, right now I have prepared, it lost the fruit because it, you know, didn't have enough water and such. It was competing with this massive tree. Uh, but I thought you know, this seedling has had an amazing life, uh, you know, it's definitely a fighter. So I thought even though this tree is unlikely to produce fruit anytime soon, uh, I prepared a scion so that I could graft this in another location in the grove uh, just to see if it happens to be a good variety or not. Uh, so I'm just going to you're gonna cut that cyan. We'll do. We'll graph that in a, in a moment. Uh, happen to have. Uh, let's see. Some buddy tape with me. So I'll just wrap that up now so that uh, it doesn't lose any uh, any moisture while we're doing other things. So. But look at these nice buds that are are on this. Looks like I could use a little bit more buddy tape. There we go. Cover up that top there. Try and keep the buds from poking out too early because uh, you want to have the scion actually uh, viable before the, the buds start growing. So here's the scion from the tree that was growing right in the lychee tree, the big lychee tree. And this particular plant is an interesting one. Uh, I planted this a while ago and only this back side is grafted. It was unintentional. Uh, this part of the tree, the, uh, the rootstock, uh, just sprouted out and crowded this other, the grafted part over to the side. So it seems like this is the perfect place to put this scion. And right now, uh, this tree that's right next to it is providing a lot of shade uh, and even you know, like directly overhead. So I think it's a pretty gentle place for this scion. So basically I'm going to um, do a side veneer graft. I want to make sure that cut is very flat. Uh, test it out, see if it is. Uh, yeah. Seems like I need to make a little bit more of an angle so that it doesn't run into a bump. There's there's a little extra buddy tape that was on that so I'm going to just tuck it in the back and then 
uh, make this this side cut uh, this little notch uh, that uh, let's see so you want to get the point down to as small as it could be so we'll see if that works out so This is a pretty good place except for this bump here. So I'm just going to start the cut up further above the, those bumps where leaves used to be. And so that there's room for the scion. So hopefully this will, will fit in. Well, one thing you can do is, is bend the plant a little bit. It wasn't making contact real well. That looks pretty darn lovely. I don't see any, uh, any space between the, uh, the scion and the, the base plant. So it needed a, that extra notch taken out, plus it needed uh, a little bend of the, the branch, but that looks like it's going to be good that way. I like to secure things with the buddy tape, prevents the uh, moisture loss. And then after that's in place, oops, whoop, <laughs> didn't have to look for that one. Okay. So use a, uh, an elastic, uh, elastic strap, and or strip, and I'd like I like using that. It's just a faster way to to secure these grafts than a lot of the other ways, a lot of other materials that you use. So anyway, uh, that's our little save the save the the trooper of the seedling mango that fruited but didn't hold the fruit this year. Uh, so hopefully this cyan will survive and it will have a chance of fruiting on this particular tree in a couple years. So that's that part. Uh, but there's some other things that I wanted to show you. Um, right over here, uh, this was a seedling plant. I uh, just uh, raised up the dirt a little bit around it and I took a chance a little while ago uh, and, in grafting. Uh, this is a orange sherbet um, graft here and it was green for a long time. Uh, I figured that the leaves above would provide possibly enough um, uh, shade for it in this time of year, but I really, you know, what I do to test, it looks brown, but what I do to test it is just scratch a little bit with my fingernail. And if it's green below, then it stays on. But uh, I don't know if you, well, I can make another scratch here on this side so you can possibly see it. But you see that? That is brown underneath. So this is not any good. Uh, it was just too harsh of a climate with a, uh, sunshine and not a lot of, of rain. So I'm just going to cut this whole little branch off. And at some point we will graft some varieties onto that. But now is not a good time of year for this location. It just doesn't have much shade. So um, that's an update there. So I'll throw in trash. We have a couple of squares here of um, where I put papaya seeds and right now it looks like weed seeds that have, have um, sprouted so far. I'm hoping that the papayas do sprout but uh, those all look like weed seeds. Uh, we've got as uh, the little clusias that I uh, planted have shot out new leaves. Uh, so even though they're still tiny, 
they're growing, uh, they're growing quite a bit in just a short time. Uh, some of, for, in some instances, I think that uh, uh, they got sort of knocked off by an animal or something, possibly one of our dogs. Uh, but you know, peanut butter marmalade plant there. I, I've planted custard apple seeds, but I don't see anything sprouting yet. Uh, right here, uh, this is the the tree that I sort of root pruned, and um, I, you know, there's just so many big, big roots underneath. But today, I'm going to try to move this tree. So have to rest up for that one. <laughs> uh, I've got the little shovel here, so I'll see if if I can make any headway on this. I think it was Yeah, this is this is the easy side here. The tree's moving a little bit, so I'm always optimistic. This is getting into the big root, so I'm going to assume that that's the lychee root and that we can work around it. Oh, there's definitely a lychee root. It's like concrete down there. Yep, yeah. <laughs> very solid. And then we'd go to a happy place over here. Okay, so of course a lot of the soil is going to come off of it, but hopefully that will be enough to it'll be enough roots to have it survive. So. <laughs> uh, I've never transplanted something that has a huge root on one side, so it's, it's going to be interesting for me anyway. Okay, it's looking good. It's going to be heavy, but I think that, yeah, the, the good thing is that because of this root, I think the, the, roots, the roots from the miracle fruit are pretty um, weak on this side because of the root from the lychee. Okay, well isn't that lovely? Pretty much came out pretty well. That one, all right. So mostly pretty shallow root system. A few weeds that don't need to travel with us. Um, so, there's two things that have to happen at this point. Is one, uh, we have just lost some of the roots of this plant, so it's important to cut back the tree. Um, it's, uh, it's best not to have asked too much of the remaining roots because transplant is a trauma. Uh, So I'm just making, you know, rough cuts here, not a final cut. Uh, this is um, sort of a weird branch, so of course that can get trimmed back. Actually, I'll make this a lot, um, sort of a bushier plant by cutting way back on that. 
So it's, uh, that, that might be pretty good. Uh, cut back this a little bit. The fewer leaves to support, the better. You want to keep the, the plant active, but you want to not ask too much of it. So I actually need to go and get a, another shovel, because that is a good shovel for cutting roots, but not for digging holes. I'll be right back. So here we are, um, got my shovel, and I knew that I didn't want these two Miracle Fruit or Miracle Berry uh, plants right next to each other, but I actually hadn't planned out where to, to put the, this tree. So I would like to put it over on uh, you know the other side of the lychee tree, but I am afraid that the roots might be too, uh, too much. So I think that instead, maybe he'll be happy out in this area. Uh, let's see. This is our soursop tree. I'm just gonna, the miracle fruit doesn't uh, take a lot of room. And so I might be able to, if, if there's enough good soil here and not, uh, here's a little palm, I have no idea what kind, so it's going away. Uh, but if I can make a good hole here, I think that will be a pretty good place for the miracle fruit. Uh, they certainly have been happy here, uh, these two plants, and I just don't want that one in the path of, oh, this is looking good. This is some of the best soil on, on the whole property. Uh, you know, it's, it's actually black. We have a lot of sugar sand around, and uh, the reason that we have such good soil here is because of this tree. And, you know, this tree is, uh, you know, as I said, has been in the ground since 1955, and for the last at least 40 years, it has been dropping a lot of leaves all over the place. And so uh, it just makes a, a happy situation for new plants that are going in to this area. So. Unfortunately, I have to make the hole a little bit bigger than what the root ball is. But the good news is, so far, no major roots coming out. That's, that's just a little puny thing that might even be from the Monstera. It doesn't look like lychee root. The Monstera being this plant right back here. get the feeling that I think I'm making this hole bigger than the root, root ball, but it might not actually be. This tree is gonna be fairly close to the soursop tree, but I don't think it's gonna be a problem. It's uh, gonna be you know, four feet away, and hopefully this whole area will be very um, full of plants that just sort of commingle. Okay, let's see if this plant is gonna be happy in this hole. Oh, I did, did seem to possibly make it a little bit too deep. 
Let's see. Yeah, I could use a little bit, a little bit of that dirt down there again. One root that's, that's sticking out, so I'll just bend it around, I guess. Hopefully it will find happiness that way. So I know that there's going to be some air pockets underneath this tree because that just is what happens um, when you have like an uneven bottom to the root ball. So I'm just going to grab a hose and hopefully uh, the water will wash the uh, sand into those places. So I'll be right back. Okay. Oops. So what I'm, I'm going to do is I'll just check on this in, in a little while and I'll fill in more dirt and, uh, you know, just make sure it's well watered for a while. Um, but there's no reason to, to prolong this, uh, <laughs> this part of the, the video any longer. Uh, let me turn off this water and we'll get going on the next project here. Okay, so even though this is a wonderful dog place, they love the fresh dirt, it's, uh, but this really needs to, <laughs> to get cleaned up. So sorry about that, Ruru. Don't want somebody to fall in the hole. Um, and I'll add a little bit more sand uh, to this uh, later. But, you know, that seems a lot safer for people and not as fun for dogs. So, a uh, couple other things is uh, this, I'm not sure if I've, I mentioned this or not. Uh, this is another seedling mango. And, of course, I would like to graft onto it. Um, and my vision is, uh, and I don't know if it's going to be practical or not, uh, but I'm thinking that I'll let the mango get taller and then keep the miracle fruit sh uh, shorter. Uh, I think that the miracle fruit, this particular tree and the one that I just moved, I uh, got tall and lanky because it, both of them used to be growing in a very shady location. Uh, this uh, huge lychee tree, the canopy went, went several feet um, beyond these trees. And so they had to, you know, sort of fight for sunlight. Uh, so tall and lanky. And um, so now that they have sun, I think if I cut this back, it will be get, become more of a bush. So anyway, this is going to be like, they're going to be pals here for a long time, I think. Uh, grafted mango eventually, and then we have uh, the miracle fruit that will be shorter and bushy. Um, this particular seedling here, uh, I didn't know what kind it was, but I figured I could find that out real, or I could determine what kind it was by grafting. And so I have, um, put three uh, uh, seacrest scions on and uh, this one I cut back a while ago but these other two um, 
the final cut I am going to do today, uh, here is, is the scion. This is what I grafted. It was a side veneer graft. So I would like to make an angle cut to right where uh, it has the last point where it was merging onto this this you know the base tree. So um, this is a part that is no longer needed, and that you know you know another year or so you really won't be able to tell uh, you know where those graphs were. They they sort of uh, equalize out. Uh, this was a lucky graft uh, it was, uh, in a, um, horizontal, which that gets a lot of sun that way. But the same thing is I'm going to, uh, you know, this is the original seedling here, and I'm going to cut um, the uh, seedling back to the grafted area so that all the energy of this tree can go to the grafts. So now this is officially a seacrest uh, mango tree. Now, the other thing that I wanted to mention is that, uh, you know, I've been spreading this, this mulch that we've gotten. And uh, there's one thing that I like to do with mulch. And in this area, I don't have... Uh, enough stores to really, you know, reserves to really do much um, in, in the way of weed control. Uh, but anything that, any paper that I have that doesn't have plastic in it, uh, I save. And I save for putting under mulch. And so this is a little area, you know, that I, I know I want mulch in. So just we'll put these old pieces of paper down and it's not unfortunately not going to make a huge difference but I'm going to keep my eye out for cardboard that people are throwing away so I can improve or, or extend this kind of uh, concept but I'm going to go grab a wheelbarrow full of mulch and dump it here and that hopefully will be just about the end of the work part. So there are going to be a few unhappy weeds under the papers and cardboard that I put down. But then the rest of these weeds are going to be pretty happy. Uh, so that's the unfortunate thing about not having enough uh, cardboard and such collected. Uh, here's our, our finger sop tree that uh, uh, Har gave me. and. Uh, it's still sort of looking a little bit, uh, you know, like like it's struggling a little bit. So I'm actually uh, going to be getting organic fertilizer for this because I think it would benefit a lot from some some nitrogen and other nutrients. So hopefully next time we check back, this tree is going to be looking great. Uh, but um, anyway. Uh, this whole fruit forest, the little mini fruit jungle or whatever is, you know, we're, we're making headway on that. Uh, I was waiting until after the treatment for this tree was finished. And, uh, you know, that happened a little while ago. Um, I think it was about four months ago. Uh, but the, the one thing uh, that sort of concerns me is that I don't think that they got rid of all the lychee arenose mites. Uh, there are a few leaves here that are are not looking good to me. So. Here's a couple leaves right here. Uh, you know, that looks fairly normal uh, from that side. Uh, but this, I think, is just the beginning stages of the Aranos mite. The little uh, dimples and stuff. Uh, 
you know, that, that doesn't look good to me. Uh, this whole area, this little cluster is not looking good. I'm not an expert on this lychee Aranos mite, but I feel like I had a crash course with our 31 lychee trees. Uh, this looks like the return, just the first stages of the mite infestation. Uh, these are, this is all on leaves that have emerged after the treatment uh, ended. So uh, when you have a mite that is microscopic, it can be carried miles by the wind. And so who knows where these mites came from. I'm hoping that this tree is the only tree in the grove that has it, but unfortunately it has a huge impact on, um, well, of course our lives. Uh, and also, um, you know, this mini fruit jungle here that I was envisioning, uh, hopefully, all these trees will continue to be happy and that we'll have all sorts of things growing in this area. Uh, but um, that's, you know, we've got a lot of exciting things going on and a lot of progress on what we've put in so far. And I'm just hoping that we can have uh, a lot of success going forward. I want to plant some more trees in this area, trees and bushes. Uh, that produce fruit and hopefully will have a healthy lychee uh, tree also.